Suhaib al-Rumi relates this hadith and he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa how wondrous is the affair of the believer inna amruhu kullahu lahu khair all of his affair is good وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدًا إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ And that is for no one except the believer. إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرْ When he is given blessings, he's grateful. فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And it was good for him, those blessings. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ ضَرَّاءُ is anything harmful. So it can be like calamities, diseases, loss of wealth, all those things that are mentioned in the ayah. صَبَرْ He shows patience. Or she shows patience. فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And therefore it was better for them. So this is the hadith that it's all good. That statement is actually a true statement. It's kind of said, like a lot of people say that, that are in some of the most difficult situations in the United States, but they say it's all good. That's that kind of deep African belief that's hard to pull out, a certain segment of our society. But it's all good. That's ex- essentially what the hadith is saying, that if you are a believer... It's all good, that even the harm is good because there's a hikmah behind it. I once saw an interview with Christopher Reeve who had a horrible accident. And this is the guy that played Superman. And then he had a terrible accident where he actually broke his neck and he was paralyzed completely. And he was interviewed and the man said, how can you, you, you just seem to be dealing with this so well. And he said, look, there's two ways that can you, you can view the world. One is that it's meaningful and the other is that it's meaningless. And I choose to see it as meaningful, which is one of the reasons why I feel I've become an advocate for disabled peoples. So he took a tribulation and and made it something else. I don't know if it's from his Christian background or what, but that's what a believer would do. You know, we wouldn't wish that on our worst enemy. And there's a wonderful Iraqi that I met uh, in in Medina, a really beautiful young man. And unfortunately, he was completely paralyzed. In a, in a bomb that happened, an American bomb. He lives now in the United States with his father. And just beautiful spirit. It was just incredible uh, young man. But I was struck by just the goodness and the, the acceptance of something that it came from Vulm. Undeniably, it was, it, was a, it was a wrong. To bomb people is just wrong. I actually believe that bombing is a, a war crime. And I really think there should be international law against aerial bombardment. But anyway, so he was a victim of that. But in the end, he, he was a believer. And he was practicing this hadith that how wondrous is the affair of the believer, that his affair is all good. And, and so life is very short on earth. You're suffering whatever it is, whatever tribulation you might be in. And there's people that are in different tribulations. Muslims forget The tribulations aren't just uh, difficulties. There's also the tribulation of wealth, the tribulation of privilege. These are trials. Like Allah says, we have privileged some of you over others. That's in the Quran. So when you see somebody who's in a privileged state, how are they using their privilege? Are they using it for good or for ill? When the Quran said, وَجَعَنَا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً أَتَصْبِرُونَ We made some of you a tribulation for others. Will you show patience? وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرٌ And your Lord sees everything. One of the, the things about that ayah, uh, Ibn, Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah said that Allah has made Poor people a tribulation for rich people and rich people a tribulation for poor people. He's made the ignorant a tribulation for the learned and the learned a tribulation for the ignorant. He's made, and you, we could go on, the black a tribulation for the white and the white a tribulation for the black. This is the world that we're in. And so then it becomes, how are we going to, are we going to be in accordance with God and his messenger or are we going to be jahili people? So we, we, we see... Uh, the world as it is, and 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 that's a big difference. There's all these people that w- want this perfect world. It's called Jenna. That that that's the word for it. It's not dunya. Dunya is literally in the universe. We're in the bath, the toilet of of the universe. Like this is dunya. It's the lowest place. And by that. The toilet is the place where you empty out your foulness. You get rid of, of your foulness. That's what we're here to do. This is dunya. We're in the lowest place. And it's all up from here. It's all up. Because even people in hell, all they can remember is God. So they're just in a state of dhikr all the time, wishing that they could be righteous. You know, wishing that they didn't waste their life away. So they're actually in a state of nadama, which is a healthy state. 
So this is dunya, just accept it for what it is. Thus it's been said, look at people as if they were perfect and consider imperfection to be in their nature. In other words, be kind to people, have a good opinion of people. If perfection appears in them, it is from fadl, it's grace. Because some people are perfect in certain things. Like you know people that just really have beautiful adab or they, uh, c- character or they're honest or they're things. So, so in certain areas there and then in other areas you have the shortcomings. Otherwise, what was previously mentioned is the norm. In other words, imperfection. Then he says, and this is what's really important. This is the key. Through this outlook, prudence, good feelings, companionship, and overlooking mistakes takes place. So in other words, you can, you can keep your, friends and and when you see them fall short i mean uh there, there's a famous actor D- david niven who who was friends with this other actor named errol flynn and he said the one thing about errol flynn that you could always count on is that he would let you down <laughs> so so there's people like that you know but to know that about somebody is is useful because it's like okay that's just him being him or her being her so that's just dunya. There's going to be people that will constantly let you down and just recognize that, that that's, that's who they are and, and just try to show some compassion. This principle is that the world, dunya, is their dwelling. And then he says, I have established a principle through which I, shall, I never find repulsive anything that comes to me in this world. Okay, let me repeat that because it's, it's so interesting. He says in Arabic, Imam al-Junaid. Asaltu asran la atabashya'u ba'duhu ma yaridu alayya min al-alam. So I have taken as an axiom, something that is axiomatic, it's, it's a principle, it's a foundational truth about the world. And it is this, he said. Once I took this as a, as a principle, I no longer find repulsive whatever comes to me from the world. And it is this. وَهُوَ أَنَّ الدُّنْيَا دَارُ هَمٍ وَغَمٍ وَبَلَاءٍ وَفِتْنَةٍ That this abode is the abode of depression, tribulation, strife, fitna, which is trials and tribulations, civil strife. وَأَنَّ الْعَالَمْ كُلَّهُ شَرٌ Shar here doesn't really mean evil. What it means is it's deficient. Because the Arabs call poverty shar. Because you're lacking. So it's an abode of want. This is the nature of the abode that we're in. It's the abode of want. And, and, and he said, وَمِنْ حُكْمِهِ أَنَّهُ يَتَلَقَّانِي بِكُلِّ مَا أَكْرَهُ And from the judgment upon this world is that it will always come to me with what I don't like. One of the most extraordinary hadiths of the Prophet him, in my estimation is the الْجَنَّةُ حُفَّةَ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِهِ That Paradise is surrounded by distasteful things, things that we don't like. Uh, and, and, but then he said that the, the and hell is surrounded by th- delightful things, things that entice us. And so part of what we're doing here in the dunya is, is t- to really avoiding those things that might be pleasurable in the moment, but in the long term are very harmful. It's like eating cake or something like that. Whereas most of the foods that taste good Uh, are harmful for you. And then the foods that um, are really good for you are not as tasteful. And that's kind of a metaphor for what the Prophet was saying, that things that are good for you are often not very pleasurable, but things that are bad for you are very pleasurable. It's very interesting that sugar, everybody loves sugar, but it rots your teeth, it it really has a bad impact on your health, and yet it's pleasurable. And that's, that's the nature of sin. And so appetites are what take people to hell because they're going after what they want as opposed to what they need. And there's a big difference between needs and wants. And then he says, And if it greets me with what I love, that's grace from Allah. Basis of this dunya is the first. In other words, that it's just a place of tribulation. I mean, that's the first noble truth in Buddhism, is just coming to terms with the world is suffering. 
And, and, and then they said the second one is that the source of suffering is attachment to the world. And that's what Kierkegaard was saying is that we have to be weaned of the world like you wean a child. What does a child do when it's weaned? It cries. But once it gets weaned, it's, it, it moves to the next stage. So we are going to be weaned of the world forcefully. It's called death. And, and our tradition is, it's a sahih hadith. Consider yourselves already dead. In other words, wean yourself of this world. And the best way to do it is just to accept the world. Just accept it. You know, somebody once did an emotional equation where he said that disappointment was reality plus expectation. So if you don't expect anything from the world, you're always going to be happy. Even better yet, if you just expect the worst. <laughs> and this is, you know, this whole thing about the secret, you know, this new age thing is like, oh, you can, you can just put in your mind positive thoughts and it'll all. We should be positive and that the Prophet ﷺ was very positive. In fact, somebody once asked him, can he said, oh, an sharr and he said, لا تسألوني عن الشر وسألني عن الخير. Don't ask me about evil, ask me about good. So the Prophet ﷺ was very positive, but he knew the abode, he knew the secret of the abode. And that's why all of the tribulations never affected him. It's called being in the hub. The eye of the hurricane is real. I mean, God made the hurricane, but he made the eye of the hurricane. And if you're in the eye of the hurricane, the hurricane's all around you, that's dunya. The eye of the hurricane is accepting the dunya as it is. And I'm preaching to myself because we all fall short. But if you live in that abode, you will really be in a, in a good state. And we should be happy. In fact, one of, one of my father's teachers was once asked, can a man be happy knowing the world's filled with suffering? And he said, oh yes, the happy man knows that the world is suffering and yet he's happy despite that suffering. And he said, how is that possible? He said, because one of the reasons why the world is, is such a miserable place is there's so many unhappy people in it. And so don't contribute to being one of those people that make the world a miserable place. There is a moral obligation to be happy. And this is why the Prophet loved uh, Sa'id. If he heard somebody call somebody named Sa'id, he would light up. Because he took it as, oh, happy one, oh, felicitous one. Ya Sa'id. If he heard that, he would take it, that's me. فَبِذَارِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ Let them rejoice in, in what all this guidance that we've been given. Let's be happy, not miserable. All these miserable, but you know, the word for the people going to hell is shaki, which also means miserable. So don't be from the ashqiyya, don't be from the miserable ones, be from the su'ada, the happy ones. Oh, ya bushara lana ma'ashar al-Islam. Rejoice, oh people of Islam. We have a rukn ghair munhadami. We have a pillar that can never be destroyed. It's called Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the pillar. Just cling to the rope of Allah. He gave us the rope, the Prophet. He gave us the rope. And, and he said, cling to it. The Quran says, Wa'atasimu alhamdulillah. Wa la tafarraqum.